Good morning. Good morning. This is a day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome each one of you here today. I worship in our sanctuary, on our on live streaming, and those who will be watching us later as we upload the service to YouTube. Now, today I have a couple of special announcements. People have asked me, how can I tell or how can I see God's love among us? Well, I have three reasons. The first one is the wedding anniversary of Aaron and Rick coming up. That's today, right? Today. The second one is the wedding anniversary of Harry and Sally Roush. It's their 39th wedding anniversary. And the third one is the wedding anniversary of Loretta and Bob Beers, 60 years, 60 years. Now you can see that sign of God's love among each one of us. Let's all rise for invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, and you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please join me for our opening hymn, the solid rock.
one. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Since we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Here ends our first reading this morning. gospel is written in the gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter, verses 20 through 35. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went out to take charge of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying them, him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mothers and brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord, and you may be seated. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace be given to you from Almighty God and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I suspect some of you, not all of you, but some of you will remember a TV comedy, like a sitcom from the 1970s called All in the Family. Some of you remember that? You mean some of you younger ones? Do you, you, no? Okay. Well, then I got to tell you all about it. I have to tell you that this show, half-hour show, is, re, is often regarded 
as one of the greatest television series of, in history. Why? Because it took on topical issues of the day. Now, this is the 70s. Those issues of the days, racism, anti-Semitism, religion, and during that time it was the Vietnam War. Now, the show is about a working class white family living in Queens, New York. Its patriarch is Archie Bunker, an outspoken, narrow-minded man, seemingly prejudiced against everyone who was not like him, and prejudiced against all of those, against his idea of what people should be. Now, Archie's wife, Edith, is a very loving and sweet lady, although portrayed on the show as somewhat naive. The one child, Gloria, is generally kind and good-natured like her mother, but unlike her mom, she is an ardent feminist. Gloria is married to graduate student Michael Stivick, whose values are likely influenced and shaped by that cultural counterculture of the 1960s. Now, these two couples represent a real life clash of values between the greatest generation, or the silent generation, and the baby boomers. So, for much of the series, the Stivics live in the bunker's home to save money. And so that provides abundant opportunity for them to irritate each other. And each half hour show, they irritated each other. This show resonated with many families then, and, and perhaps even today. Families who have a clash of values. But you know, this show did it lift up one major theme among all those disagreements. Their love for each other still shone brightly through. The word family is as foundational a concept in the Bible as, as anything else. The Bible, as we know, begins in Genesis, not with the talks of nations and tribes, but talks of families, big families, real families. With moments of dysfunction so great it makes your head turn some bit as you read, and gives one pause at the phrase, Biblical family values. And sure, there are other great metaphors to describe the relationship between God and humankind, king and subjects, master and servants, but it always comes back around to family. And we are God's children. And so, coming to God and God's kingdom is really like going home going back to family. Now, in this third chapter of Mark, Jesus' family is either frustrated with him or just, just plain worried about him. They hear that Jesus is drawing crowds again, and they go to restrain him because people are talking. Some people think he's crazy. And his family is either embarrassed or worried of what might become of him because it usually doesn't end well for such people. But Jesus doesn't seem to mind. After all, he knows how badly, it, how badly it's all going to turn out. So what does he do? He opens up the tent and allows everyone who wants to enter the chance to enter. So who is his family? Those who do the will of God. When you do the will of God, you get the chance to be his brother, his sister, and even his mother. Jesus' family is an open family. And the door to the family's family homestead is wide open. And, you know, while the rest of us may bring dysfunction in the door with us, and at times we can look like a group of misfits, the things we gain are amazing. And the greatest of these things is love. 
And we're going through a time when our lives have been disrupted, when anxiety over change seems to grab and hold on to us, not only with the pandemic still looming over us, but with the societal and political differences that try to separate us. There are people in our lives who seem to thrive on disagreement and division, and there are institutions that would rather find any and all potentiality for dissension just to prove themselves right, to justify their own positions, their own beliefs, than to do the hard work of searching for avenues of possible agreement. With Jesus, though, the welcome mat is out. Jesus is seen as somewhat dangerous because he is offering people, people like us, he is offering us hope. Hope that lives will improve. Hope that God is doing something new. Hope that we don't have to be satisfied with the lot in life that we have received and that there might be something more. You know, when the world is set up with some people on the top, and many more at the bottom, it's disrupting to see people at the bottom wonder if they really have to stay there. Well, Jesus is clearly in tune with God. His adversaries attack him at precisely that point, charging that his power and authority come not from God, but from the devil. Jesus' response you know, which has rung down through history, thanks to Abraham Lincoln, is that a house divided cannot stand. I can tell you, if you want a comfortable gospel that affirms the status quo, you're probably at the wrong place. Because the gospel upends things, inviting us to see that God has more in store for us than we'd ever imagined, more than we'd even dare to hope. But new life is threatening precisely because it calls into question the lives that we've gotten used to. That's the promise of the gospel. When the gospel is proclaimed, those who are most satisfied probably aren't sure why they came, while those who are down and out, those are, who are eager for a chance to change, flock to the source of this new message. It can be also life-changing by anyone willing to believe the message, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now just look for a moment. Found in each named generation, the greatest or traditional generation versus the baby boomers as depicted in that show, All in the Family, to now the millennials, to Generation X, gener Generation Y, Generation Z. But you know, Jesus doesn't care which generation you, from which you hail. Jesus is concerned with what unites us, not with what separates us. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus says this. Jesus says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Church, the Christian church, this church, they all can be and they all are that fresh, that new family composed of those who have heard Jesus' follow me and have stepped forward and said, yes. And the chief act of worship isn't some mysterious rite. It's a family meal with everyone around the table. The Sunday dinner that we call Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. Family as God intended family to be. We will be celebrating Holy Communion today.
This is family. A family gathered as God intended family to be. So, whether you think you're worthy doesn't matter. You are. If you think you're invited, do you think you're invited? It doesn't matter. You are invited. You are invited. All of you, whether you're watching live stream or later on, you are invited as well. So come. Come on in. Come join the family. Thanks be to God. Amen. Ask God to please rise for our next hymn, Standing on the Promises. Please say with me a statement of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who wish the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. Let us come before the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we gather together in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy. God of the universe, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Jesus, lover of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Especially we pray for Carson Barron, Kaylin Butler, Denise Campbell, Denise Campbell. Leanne, Christina, Leanne Christina, Diane Heckman, Diane Heckman. Austin, Klein, Austin Klein, Pastor David Noble, Pastor David Noble. Lisa, Long, Lisa Long, Gail Lofman, Gail Lofman. Leona Markovich, Leona Ken Madiak, Francis McHugh, Francis McHugh, Julie Meckes, Larry Meckes, Donald Miller, Donald Miller Frank Niedespal, Frank Niedespal Darlene, Phillips, Darlene Phillips, Earl Pratt, Earl Pratt Barbara, Renninger, Barbara Renninger, Harry Rausch, Harry Rausch Sally Rausch, Sally Rausch Lisa, Sanchez, Lisa Sanchez, Maisie Schock, Maisie Schock Richard Shook, Shook Kay Smith. Curtis Steigerwalt, Curtis Steigerwalt, Junior Steigerwalt, Junior Steigerwalt Sue Stroll, Stroll Jean Swartz, Swartz, Jeff Tierney, Jeff Tierney Kevin, Tyson, Kevin Tyson, Julie Wood, Julie Wood Gary, Zayner, Gary Zayner. Lord, in your mercy. Your holy Spirit of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
call forth eternal hope within us, O God. Our faith abounds because of your redeeming grace, with hearts uplifted by the truth of your mercy, and spirits cleansed with the fullness of your indwelling blessing. We come before you ready and eager to serve. Continue to fashion us until we conform to your will for us. Equip us and through Christ, Make us useful as agents of your all-embracing love. Now as we enter into the sacrament of Holy Communion, know that each one of you is welcome, each one of you is invited to be a part of this church family. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, Our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks to God for the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples to drink. And he said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do this for the remembrance of me. Consecrate these gifts of bread and drink, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may be offer you our faith and praise, We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue to be faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we are for ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, I Love to Tell the Story.